Now this is all Michelle Treacher's fault. You can blame her. She lives in Shanklin on the Isle of Wight. And a couple of weeks ago, she wrote to Late Night Late and she said, what has happened to the original cast of Randall and Hopkirk? Well, by fair means or foul, we have dragged Marty Hopkirk in. Oh, I... <laughs> To find out exactly, actually, he's better known as Kenneth Kirk. Actually, you're probably better known as Marty Hopkirk, aren't you? Um, yeah, a lot of people still call me Marty, but they also call me Jed from, you know, Coronation Street, Jed Stones before your time, I should think. Well, I'm afraid so. But Marty, yes, they do shout Marty, and they always also shout, as you've done already, they shout, where's your white suit? Yes, well, indeed. Well, we'll ask you about the white suit in a moment. But first of all, some of the suggestions we had about what you've been doing since Randall yes, Hopkirk are, are wide and varied, including writing plays for TV. True. True. In, you've been in Carry On Films. True. True. You've been in Children's ITV. True. True. You've been a bit part actor in America. Who wrote that? Well, I don't know. Some, somebody in here. <coughs> you can get them later. Uh, you've been acting for the National Theatre. No, National Health. <laughs> you've been running a restaurant in London, or it could be Oxford. No, it's not London, it's Oxford. It is Oxford, and right? we just sold it, so I won't say anything about it. It's a lovely life. And somebody very nastily said that you were totally bald. So I had Who to get... said that? <laughs> so I had to get you in to find out. And it's not My true, My mother-in-law writing in again, isn't it? <laughs> now, the rest of the cast of Randall and Hopkirk, a lot of people want to know. Now, sadly, we know that Mike Platt died yeah, in 1970. Yeah, smashing Really lovely, yeah. Yeah. Yes, he died about two years after we finished making it. Really? The smashing fellow. But um, what about Annette Andre? She's she well. Think? She's uh, still working as an actress in London. I think she has a child now. And she's, uh, I saw her about a year or so ago. We keep in touch on the telephone. But she's, she's nice, and she's still working as an actress, you know. So she's not a dog breeder in Switzerland, as we had someone suggest? I shouldn't think so. She got up to a few funny things at the studio, but I don't think she's involved with dogs now. <laughs> so what was it, I mean, a lot of people want to know, fans of the programme or, or otherwise, what was it like making the programme? Sheer hell. Sheer hell. <laughs> no, it, was, no, it wasn't. <laughs> ah, it was smashing, actually. We, we, we made 26 shows in 14 months, Sundays as well, because we had to do pick-up shots. And um, we, we didn't, didn't get any time off. And the audiences hadn't seen them. Mm. I mean, we all made tw uh, 26 shows in the dark. And then after we'd all finished and disbanded, they started putting them out. And they suddenly discovered that the comedy, which Mike and I were putting in, was making the programme go, you know. And it's a pity, because we could have stacked more, more comedy in. Mm. And I think it's a pity it didn't go to a second series. Mm. I mean, the Boring Champions did. No, it didn't. Department S went. Boring Department S went to Can't say series. that. <laughs> well, we were all working together. There was the Avengers, the Saints, uh, Randall and Hopkirk disease, which is a lovely show. We used to call it Marshall Slowgrove diseased, Michael and I. <laughs> and we were all working together, and we used to borrow each other's sets. I mean, if there's a library set on the Avengers, and we had one in our script, we'd go and use their studio, their set next door, and they could come and use the same as us. Mm. And we all used to interchange like that, you know. We were very, very minty. Did Marty wear a wig? He did. He had, um, <clears throat> we had a Canadian hairdresser, and Marty had a wig. And it was on back to front for the first three episodes, because she wasn't very good at her job. <laughs> And if you see the first three episodes, you'll see Marty come and see. I never noticed. He's like the middle <laughs> one of the Three Stooges. And what happened to the white suit? We had five. Um, and on the very last shot, the very last take, Pinewood backed a lot because we went to that studio to finish it up. We're by the lake. Uh, so there's a lake there. There's a sea. They can do water stuff. And um, they said it's a take because they had to check it. You know, it's a print. They had to check it. There's a hair in the beard or whatever. And as soon as they said it's a take, it's a print, I jumped into the lake with the last white suit. Because I, I, we had about, I had three doubles and two stand-ins, uh, all dressed in white suits, all supposed to look like me, but they didn't. Michael and I used to moan because they'd go out and do exterior shots. And you see, one of them walked quite strangely, actually. <laughs> and he's supposed to be a tough guy for Mike, you see, and the other guy used to walk for me. And you can see us getting in and out of cars. And it's not us, it's these doubles. And they could not, we used to rehearse them in the studio when we had time to walk up and down like us, you know, so we didn't look like idiots when they did the car shots or the run-by shots. Well, have you seen an episode of Randall and Hopkirk recently? No. I watch the news a lot, though. Are you looking forward <coughs> to this, though? Um, yes, I am. Which is what? It's who killed Cock Robbie? Yeah. I've no idea what it's about. I think there's a lot of birds in it and, you know, whatever. So, will the wig be on back to front on this episode? Um, no, I think it's number five or six, I think. <laughs> All I mean, right. You, you can tell because you can't see the eyes. <laughs> <coughs> well, I'm going to sit here with Marty Hopkirk and see him as he I'm was. I'm not going to be watching the show. I'm going to be looking at that. Oh, what a good episode, eh? Particularly like the fashions in that one. Uh, I'm glad the wig was on the... Oh, don't. <laughs> Stop messing around. <laughs> Kenneth, don't. <laughs> I have got Kenneth Cope with me here. He is messing about. He's got one of these weird Liverpudlian senses of humour. But I shall persuade him to talk about how Randall and Hopkirk is affecting his life now. But first of all, we've got to go over to the news uh, from ITN for the news headlines. Well, 
you might recognise the guy who's with me, or you might not. Hello, you look a bit different. Again. <laughs> it, is, <laughs> it is Marty Hopcoke, better known as Kenneth Cope. Well, can you tell us, well, you've got to go quite soon, but before you do, can you tell us, when you made the programmes, like that one, Yeah. did you ever think that there would be a cult programme today in 1988? Um, no. Not really. No. We tried very, very hard. We worked very, very hard. Um, I didn't see my kids growing up. They had to come to the studios on a Sunday to see Daddy. And they used to say, who? You know, we couldn't see them. Um, no, we, we were just trying to do our best, Michael and uh, Annette and I. And it was, we were a smashing trio. Michael and I, doing a scene, I could tell when he dried or was going to go. Because we mm. had to learn the dialogue under pressure. And we used to learn it just before the take. And he, he'd know when I'd gone because the eyes flashed in. You, you know, you, we both you knew when we go. Rapport. And we could ad lib on camera mm. without fluffing, without messing it up. We'd get out, get ourselves out of the scene, and there was no retakes because it was we were we was we sat, we knew each other so well. We lived in each other's pockets for what fourteen months, mm. and it was smashing. He loved me, and I loved him. And well, then Andre seems... got in the middle, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> well, it seems to have worked because Randall Hopkirk is a court program, and I've got to thank. Oh, I thought you were talking about Dixon of Dog Green. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming in. God bless you. <laughs> Goodbye, folks. Well, sadly, Kenneth has had to leave as Kenneth Cope. Um, but I hope he's answered some of the questions which you've been writing in about about Randall and Hopkirk. He's a lovely man. I've got to say that. He's waiting outside to beat me up if I say anything else. Lovely man with a great sense of humour, as you've probably gathered from our little chat tonight. And he was telling me that most of the humour in Randall and Hopkirk was actually injected by himself and Mike Pratt. They never did what the producers told them to do at all. They just got on with it themselves. And a story which which I shouldn't tell you, but I've got to, because he was telling me before, and it didn't half make me giggle. He said that the white trousers he wore with the suit were very expensive, incredibly expensive. And what he had to do is, after every scene, and they went, yeah, to take, he used to have to take his trousers off <laughs> in the middle of the studio. He used to take his trousers off. He used to give uh, one or two young ladies a bit of a shock. So I want to thank Mr. Cope very much. Kenneth, thank you for coming in tonight and explaining a bit more about Randall and Hopkirk. He's changed quite a bit, hasn't he? Um, if you think that that is the end of Late Night Late, then you've got it wrong. We're not doing what we used to do, finishing at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. We're going right, we're not even halfway through, we're going through until 6 o'clock in the morning. And I'm not going to tell you exactly what else we've got coming up because, well, because it'll give you a good excuse to go to bed. I mean, we've got good stuff coming up and you're not going to go to bed. So I shall tell you exactly what we've got coming up after company. First of all, company. <laughs>